you don't have to do everything by the norm. You know, you take your own path. You know, whatever works for you. And that's kind of what I had to figure out. I really didn't want to go to school. I didn't want to work. I was just lazy, to be honest. I was just lazy. The Marine Corps commercial came on. The guy's got his dress blues on. He's slaying dragons with a sword. And I was like, I can do that. So as soon as the commercial was over, I got up, went down the recruiting office, signed up, and I left two weeks later. That was in 1998. <laughs> a couple of decades later, I'm still wearing camouflage. My name's Tim Wobig. I am a commander in the California Army National Guard. Stand up. Stand up. Peace. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, sir. One more, one more time, I'm old and I'm kind of deaf. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Right now, I am the Deputy Commander for Recruiting and Retention in Southern California for the Recruiting and Retention Battalion. Um, we have about 135 soldiers that's responsible for helping maintain the infrastructure for the California Army National Guard. So a lot of what we do has a lot of focus, how units are going to backfill um, personnel and move to the next step to do the, the types of training and types of missions that they've been tasked to do. I gave Tim a call and I asked him, could we sit down? And I'd love to discuss his, his leadership style. He's such a humble person. He had nothing but amazing things to say about my coworkers and the people on our team. And to think about all he's been through, it's pretty incredible. To be able to sit down with him and have that level of respect from him and him care about what you're doing, even though his impact has been so much greater, it's just really, really rewarding. You can learn a lot about yourself, a lot about your character. Um, I always tell them there's a, an opportunity or a possibility where you're gonna have to deploy and you're gonna be in some uncomfortable situations. You can do as much training as you think is necessary, but until you get there, you really don't know what areas of training you really need to focus on because so many things can happen because when part of my friend shit hits the fan and there's a possibility that it could um, it really teaches you what you're made of uh, my first appointment didn't end the way i wanted it to i was the platoon leader for the mission essential engagement team and about five weeks before we were set to come home i woke up with a medical issue and I had to be medevaced out within the hour um, over to Germany. So I had to go tell my team, be safe, and basically you're gonna have to finish without me. And that was hard. That was, that was very, very hard. Even to this day, you know, teaching kids how to work as a team gives you a broader perspective on the value of life, you know, because you are placing your life in someone else's hands and he's he or she is placing their life in yours you know so it's a lot bigger um, endeavor than what most people are used to in hindsight that's what you signed up for you want to figure out what you're made of and if if i can help you know mold them if i can help um, them understand that what they're doing is for a greater good um, a lot of them are willing to take on that challenge. In 1998, I was that kid standing on the yellow footprints, and now I'm one of their commanders. And honestly, I couldn't be prouder, not just of my family supporting me, but for the path that, I, that I've taken. I mean, nobody's path is the same. You know, so if I can help them find that, then that's what I'm gonna do. Coming home from a third world country after being, being there for nine or 10 months, it's hard to capture the excitement. It was so cool to see 
their the excitement in their eyes when he came home because they were so used to just seeing him on a screen for a year and I mean I will never ever forget you know that moment that was so special You know, leaving your wife behind and saying, okay, I gotta go do my job. That's that's still hard, you know, because she's left with all the responsibility from what I had, you know, at that moment. Because we moved here from Nebraska. Katie left everything. She left her family, she left her friends, she left her work, she left everything she knew to follow me to where I was going to do my job. And that's why a lot of people don't understand behind the scenes that my job isn't the hard one. She has the hard job. There could have been times where I take it. I took a right, where I could have taken a left, or where I could have left three hours early, but I left three hours later. You know, and something may have happened. Um, I try really hard not to take so many things for granted. I really, really do. Granted, I'm not perfect, um, so I do have my downfalls, obviously. But just knowing that what we have here is far greater than what somebody else has. I mean, we have so many freedoms and so many liberties that people take advantage of, that people don't really know what it takes to get to that point, to have those types of things. What we have is for the greater good. You know, I think some, sometimes we lose sight of that. Try to be mindful of why you're there. You're not just doing a job. You have a greater effect than what you can possibly fathom.